morning everyone it has been about a month and maybe a few weeks since we last recorded and we have an update so i'll be giving you that it is now the next cycle and we had really great news that we would be able to go back this cycle instead of waiting for my next cycle um to do the frozen transfer so we, we are so excited for that so basically i asked them about a week ago if it would be possible because i'm like why do i have to wait two cycles when we could go back this cycle like everything should be back to normal by the way my face is extremely breaking out now that we've been home and i've been in a mask every single day again um so don't mind my face <laughs> but so yeah they were like yeah we you can do that you can come back and do the frozen transfer this cycle and i'm like oh my gosh okay so like in two weeks we will be going back as long as this appointment that i have this morning is good to go so obviously during fertility treatments you have ongoing ultrasounds each cycle just to make sure your lining is good and that your that everything is good to go for whatever the procedure you're doing whether it's iui ivf um so this is like the yay or nay appointment if we are clear to go and i'm just really nervous because my cycle this month was a few days late and it's never it's always regular like my cycle is usually always regular and on time so the only time when it's not is when i have a cyst and I'm just really praying that I don't have a cyst because then we will be pushed back another month. So we would be going in May instead of April. And yeah, I'm just really nervous about that. So I will find out. So this initial appointment is the baseline ultrasound appointment. It's the yay or nay of our procedure this cycle. And just praying that everything is good so i can go ahead and book everything to go in two weeks and go back for our baby embryos i have them on a on a picture frame in our house let me show you right here there they are and my sister got us this cute necklace with the compass that says for i know the plans i have for you and that came with it so all the support from our family is amazing i will be taking you guys with to the appointment so you can see you want to say hi or what sit sit it's a camera <laughs> So I will be taking you guys with to the appointment um, so you guys can see on the ultrasound. Just keep our positive, my mom is just like, just keep staying positive, okay. <laughs> and Josh too, he's like, we got this, like he's like, I don't think so. Every time I'm negative about anything, he is always my positivity coming in so i will be there in a few minutes on another note i am actually really excited to see my obgyn in minnesota because i haven't seen them since november so here we go And not that I, not that I know, every place has their own, you know, yes, guidelines. That's true. I don't want to miss. Ladies and gentlemen, 
we're proud to announce that we don't have a cyst. Oh, you don't have a cyst, but yes. we don't in a way. Yeah. Yeah. We are good to go or cleared to go for now. Yep. So we will be going back. Our flight is April 12th, so in 12 days. Yep, and it's really exciting because like this whole time you're like in a great area of not knowing exact dates and everything and this kind of sets the train going, you know? Mm -hmm. Like it has the date and it's like, okay, yeah. now we know what to ex kind of expect and mm -hmm. we can book this and that and, and it's, it's just so really it's a whole lot of yeah. unknown factors that come into play. Yeah, definitely. So definitely. now we're on to a whole nother Round of process. Them. Yeah, so today was my first day of my new medications mm -hmm. to prepare my lining and to prepare my body for the transfer mm -hmm. and I'll go over the meds in a little bit but yeah so I started that today I have a calendar with literally everything all the dosages that I need because in like five days or four days they're gonna change the dosages and stuff so we have everything booked already now that we have everything rolling um, the set date that we're gonna be leaving is the 12th and they told us roughly about how long it's gonna take it's not exactly how many days it can be from five to nine days uh, so we booked the 12th all the way into the 21st uh, just to be safe and we still you still have appointments that you have to go to yes. before she even goes over there yeah um, those appointments they told us we got to get them done so they have a good idea of where she's at uh, when, when it comes to blood work and to ultrasounds before she arrives well, yes. and to make sure that I'm for sure for sure ready to do the transfer because correct the blood work will really determine it now and it's such a close close window like it, it, short window I mean it's a really short window and they have to get it right on time so this is like helping them pinpoint exactly when they need to do it and mm -hmm. what time um so it's only going to be like a week trip trip yeah a little bit over a week just a day or two but well it could be shorter than that too because they sent me like a list of like our schedule basically with all the meds that i need to take and then at the bottom of it it says that embryo transfer may take place on april 15th so that's literally in two weeks and we arrive on the 12th so i'm really doing and what they gave us before we left last time is another paper of basically phase one is starting at home the meds that i'm starting now and then phase two is the um i guess after the transfer mm -hmm. that i'll start in mexico stella <laughs> just wants to play all the time I'm sure you guys hear her walking all around in the back. Um, so your first appointment is going to be on Tuesday, the 6th. Yep, Tuesday, April 6th. And that is to check my endometrial thickness, which basically that is what the baby implants to, like what it sticks to. So in the uterus so that will determine it has to be nice and thick and then i'll also be getting blood work that day too to check my progesterone levels and estra estradiol i don't know how to pronounce it i think that's how you say it estradiol levels the progesterone is crucial and i mean i guess both of them are crucial they have to be at certain levels to be able to be okay to do the transfer but what you were struggling with which is first time yeah is... which is why we couldn't do the fresh transfer the first time we were in mexico because my progesterone was too high it was above one and they needed it lower than one to do the fresh transfer so and that is just caused because of all the stims that i was doing mm -hmm. the medication does a lot on your body and it so. reacts differently to everybody yeah and it reacted a little bit in a negative way towards you mm -hmm. which is okay because um, we're back in mm -hmm. uh we actually found out that frozen transfers have slightly a higher increase of success rates so 
it probably worked out that way for a reason okay and then i have the same appointment on april 10th which is saturday morning before we leave on monday um to do the same thing and that one will be the determining factor pretty much and yeah my clinic here faxes and emails over my records Stella, my records over to live fertility clinic in mexico so they are all working together in sync oh well, yeah guys if everything goes as planned and smooth we will be doing our transfer in two weeks we'll be coming back pregnant mm -hmm. okay so i wanted to go over the medications that i'm on to prepare my body for the frozen transfer um since we're doing it in mexico they are all i got all the medication when we were in Mexico in February, just to be prepared for it. Um, so it's all different brands, but um, yeah, I just wanted to go over them. So if anyone can relate. So phase one is the meds that I'm starting at home once my cycle started and I am already on day five or six of these, um, but this one I don't know how to pronounce, but it's called, I'll put the names down here. I call it Doxy. It looks like this. It's a small tablet, or cap, yeah, tablet, and it's just an antibiotic to prevent infections in the vagina and uterus. They're just small capsules. So I actually finished my dose of this medicine. It was one every morning and one every night for five days, and I just finished that. And then um, Primogen tablets. And this is really what's going to help get the thicker endometrial, endometrial stripe, the lining, which the baby implants too. So this kind of looks like birth control pills but i have five boxes of them each of them have 28 pills so the first five days i would take one morning and night and now i just started taking it morning afternoon and night and then in three or four days i will be starting to take one in the morning one afternoon and then two at night so we really want the lining to be super thick so it's healthy for the baby to implant to it the embryo i should say and then prednisone um i have their tablets it says it decreases immune reactions at the endometrial level increasing chances of implantation so just small um tablets uh, I take one every night and then baby aspirin or just aspirin I take one of those every night as well and that helps um, the blood flow in the endometrial or improves endometrial blood circulation so they're just small tablets of those ones and yeah I take one every night and then the last one for the meds that I start at home is, um, I don't know how to pronounce it, but it's basically a vaginal pearl, I guess I could say. Vaginal pearl or vaginal insert. So I just started this last night and I'll be doing it for 10 nights, um, inserting one of them. And that helps improve normal helps to improve normal vaginal flora so i will be doing that once a night for 10 nights and yeah that's the uh phase one of meds that i started at home and then i have the meds on phase two i have the list of meds for phase two but i will go over those when we are in mexico or once i have those so i know exactly which ones i'm taking and when as well i also wanted to mention i have started doing acupuncture sessions so i recently 
found out all of the benefits of doing acupuncture and started to do it myself i found a doctor that or an acupuncturist that specializes in infertility so that is what i am being treated for i started to go once a week but then once we found out we were going to be doing our transfer so soon we bumped it to twice a week just so we can get um a good amount of sessions in for the treatment so i will put a video in i of what that looks like so i'm here right now um doing my acupuncture so i'm gonna start coming twice a week now since we leave in like a week and a half so this week i'll come two times and next week I'll come two times just to, for a more intense treatment since we're doing the transfer right away. so all of the needles are in and now i lay here for 40 minutes and relax just got my blood work and waiting so this ultrasound is just to check my um lining my endometrial lining to see how thick it is getting leave it to me i completely forgot to record while i was getting the ultrasound done <laughs> um i haven't seen any of the nurses in I think since November or the end of October, our last IUI session, so, or our last IUI procedure, so, um, they were like, oh, like, it's good to see you, and just asking me about my IVF experience, and yeah, just conversating, so I got distracted and completely forgot to record, but she said my lining is beautiful, and we just are waiting for the results for the blood work which um those will be faxed to my doctor in mexico so yeah so far so good we go i go back saturday to do it all over again to do the same thing and then we fly out sunday i think it's nice and thick mm -hmm. oh wow 14.14 nice Mm -hmm. and we are back in mexico here we are <laughs> round two round two so i did not update you on saturday of that ultrasound appointment so basically my lining is between is like 13 or 14 millimeters between there uh, which is really good. Our doctor emailed us after she got the results and said it's looking very good. And just to continue with taking the meds that I've been taking. And then my blood work is good too. So my progesterone is below one, which they want it below one. So today we have our appointment at three. Three o'clock today. And right now we're going to go get our car so we're able to drive around half the reason why is because kirsten has to be extra gentle yeah with herself after after the transfer i think i'll be on bed rest or just needing to relax for one or two days after yep so that way we don't have to uber back and forth places and yeah just just relax here and um what was i gonna say 
Oh yeah, so at today's appointment, we're not really sure what to expect. I'm sure they'll do another ultrasound and maybe blood work to just check where my levels are at, at, are at now, two days after. Um, so I guess we'll update you guys at our appointment. Okay, we are in the lobby waiting and I'm so happy to see all of the nurses and our doctor again. It's so good to be back. And this is the stripe, this thickness, mm -hmm. this layer started here. And look at this, we are already starting to notice the three lines there. Yeah. Here we have the right one. Okay. This little phone call, do you remember from last time? Yeah. Okay, so now they are little, right? Yes. Because we are not working with them. And lift one. Here. Good. So all the follicles, they are little. No dominant ones. No C's. Mm -hmm. That's good. Good, good. Okay, so this means we may proceed. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> So we got back from our appointment today and everything looked good. Um, it was nice seeing everybody after leaving for what, a month and a half? Yeah. About a month and a half? A month and I think a week or two weeks, yeah. Yeah. And then just seeing them all over again, it's like surreal. It's like, oh, we're back where we were. Yeah. And back for round two, which we're really excited because this appointment is what set the date for the transfer too. So we do have one more appointment we have to go through. Aside from that appointment, um, there is other medications and a little bit more instructions of how Kirsten should go about it. Yeah. Um, so I guess if you want to explain the instructions they gave you. Yeah. <laughs> so I basically I'm on all of the same meds. We're just adding in progesterone. So mm -hmm. um, I'll be doing progesterone inserts so they're vaginally vaginal inserts um that i do morning night and evening and that will help get my progesterone levels way up and then the prednisone i'm just taking a higher dosage of that one and yeah i think everything else is the same yeah besides those two stay on the same medication yeah. you're taking before mm -hmm. and then so friday our appointment or i'll get my blood drawn again i think that's all that we're doing friday and oh and then we have to get you have to get tested for covid again yes so you can go through the procedure again yeah so since the um transfer is in the surgery room like i'll be awake for it but it's in the surgery room um i have to be tested for covid mm -hmm just since I'll be operated on, but not asleep, if that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, so they, need, they need the, that, so they need that test a day before uh, the transfer. Yep, and the transfer date is Saturday. April 17th. But no time yet, we still gotta figure that out. Yeah, the embryologist is going to email us and let us know like how our embryos are doing. I think it might depend on the thawing process, maybe. But she will reach out to us and set the time. She'll let us know on Friday, right? No, I think in a couple of days. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I think. Should be. Are you sure? I think so, yeah. <laughs> But yeah, so we have a date and it's really setting setting in and how many are we transferring? 
we made the decision on two today. Yeah, so back at home we, uh, Josh and I were already set on the number two, like we wanted to transfer two mm -hmm. um, to heighten the chances of at least one implanting. And then we talked to the doctor and she also recommended two. So now we're like, okay, it's set. We are doing two. Not three or four. Yeah, or <laughs> one. <laughs> but two and we also we already paid for it um the embryo glue which is an adhesive it works like a glue but not a real glue it just supports the implantation yeah. yeah it just supports the implantation to help it stick it's an adhesive to help heighten the chances of implantation correct so <laughs> there we go <laughs> good job so yeah, we will be doing that as well. We already paid for it back in February and we are set. That is it. And then it's the time. Yeah, and then after the transfer, I'll be on more meds and oh. getting a shot of progesterone instead. In your butt. Yeah. Instead that of I have to give to you. Instead of the injections. Yep. They'll show you. I think on Friday. It's a big needle. On Friday, it might be my first injection of progesterone. That's when they would do it. I think so. They depending on my lab results on Friday. It's a booster. Yeah. But all right, we will um, keep you updated as the days go by. So our embryologist emailed us yesterday and just was confirming everything, and our transfer is happening on Saturday the 17th at 11 a.m. It's gonna be a girl. <laughs> We're transferring too, so... We'll see if we have one baby or two babies. Good morning. It is transfer day. It is our <laughs> day that we've been waiting for. Yes. And we are swagged out. But shout out to my cousin Brittany. She made us these shirts for our day. They say this is my lucky transfer shirt. Hashtag IBF mom and IBF, IBF dad. dad. They're was, so cute. I was like looking at it in the mirror while I was brushing <laughs> my teeth and I'm like, this is IBF dad. Like We are warriors. Parents. <laughs> parents. I know. So I am drinking a ton of water, so I have a full bladder. We actually got seven bouquets of flowers for our the doctor. Whole staff, yeah, yeah. The, our doctor got a big one. Um, the nurses and the embryologists and what is it called, Cairo? Something. Something who takes care of the embryos when they're Cairo frozen or whatever it's called. Cairo frozen. I don't know what it's called, <laughs> but so we got a bunch of flowers for all of them that we are going to pick up first. Yeah, they're really good people and they helped us out too. Yeah, a lot. they really did and they are super helpful and they're just so Willing personable and they're great people so mm -hmm. they deserve it. It's the least we can do for them helping us with this. So another thing is we can't have like anything scented on us, like no perfumes, no um, colognes, no lotions. Deodorant. We didn't even risk it with deodorant. Yeah, today, mm -hmm. um, because the embryos are super sensitive to scent, smell. Yeah, the embryos are super sensitive to smell and to scents, so we didn't even want to risk it with deodorant. So we are not smelling fresh today. <laughs> But yeah, so we um, are going to head and get all the flowers and we'll be on our way. Our appointment is at 10.30. We're going to pick up the flowers at 10.15. <laughs>
Okay. Everything is done. Now it is the waiting game. Yes, now it's the two week wait, the waiting period, which is gonna kill us, but. At the same time, you still have to take medications. I still have to give you the shot. You still gotta keep up with the stuff you're doing right now. Mm -hmm. So. But yeah, the doctor said that everything went great during the transfer. The embryos are super healthy. Yes, the um the thawing was very good too. That yeah. was another factor that came in that was risky, I guess. Is sometimes they don't thaw out correctly or good enough. Well, so yeah, just like sometimes the embryos don't make it through the thawing stage. But they 100% made it. Yeah, both the embryos that we transferred made it 100% through the thawing stage. And here they are. Mm -hmm. <laughs> April 17th. And um, they're both graded AA embryos. So Which it's is really the best good. grading you can get. Yeah, which is the best grade that we can we could get, and the embryologist just said that she's very optimistic, basically, for a good outcome for us. They were all so happy for us. We all took pictures. <laughs> yes. Delivered the flowers. They were taking pictures on their own phones for themselves. Of yeah, with us, us together. Like. All together, like they. It's just like we're family or something yeah you like, like build the bond yeah it was a great experience and it's sad we don't have another appointment with him i know now we go home yeah it's just kind of sad because it's like do we have a follow-up appointment and they're like no this is it they just gave us our medicine my medicine list and what to do and mm -hmm. they're just like that's it your pregnancy test is april 30th and yeah. basically their job is done here but i'm like hmm <laughs> so sad but i definitely will keep in contact with them right and yep and you are able to ask any questions because yeah. you have their number still and everything but yeah you have to be on bed rest till monday yeah till monday i'm just gonna be laying low and relaxing and nothing heavy no mm -hmm. getting dunked in water no pools no baths no none of that nope none of that just laying low mm -hmm. and that's for the whole two weeks until my pregnancy test so so i guess our next video will be april 30th Wow. When we do the pregnancy test. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, I personally think you're already pregnant. I know, he's like treating me like I'm pregnant. He's like, you need to be careful. <laughs> well, I do need to be careful right now because because technically they need an implant. If but you are pregnant on the 30th, you got pregnant today. Today, yeah. So technically speaking, you are pregnant right now True. if you're pregnant on the 30th. <laughs> True, <laughs> yeah. Wow. I know. So we'll have a baby or two coming soon. Good morning everyone! It is our big day today. <laughs> it's been a couple weeks since, or a week, probably a week or a week and a half since we last recorded and obviously we're back home now and today is the day we find out if our frozen transfer worked or not. So today we find out if we are pregnant. <laughs> I am feeling all of the emotions today. I'm nervous. I'm excited. But yeah, we're both ready to find out. So basically, I'm getting the blood test right now. I just parked and then the results will be in today. And I'm going to tell them to leave me a detailed voicemail because I work today. And once i get home from work then josh and i will listen to the voicemail together and find out together <sighs> but it's all in god's hands we have faith we are very hopeful and very positive i have also had some signs of implantation so i'm just like i cannot wait to find out like i need to know so, yeah, I guess I'm going to go in and get the blood test done, and then we will record when we listen to the voicemail. Wow. 